Hello everybody, welcome to our first virtual visit. Today I'm here with Jeff Pyle and his wife Chris at the Dancing Bird in downtown Cumberland. So what we're going to do is have a little bit of background given by these two wonderful business owners and then we're going to take a little tour of the shop so that you guys can see over 50 vendors works that are here at the store right now. We're not, definitely not going to get through everything but we're going to show you just as much as we can in the half an hour or so that we'll be here. Hopefully you can join us for the whole time, but if not, just remember that this video will be on our Facebook page at the end of the interview. And we'll also be compiling another video that has, well, hopefully as much of the different artist works that we can get. Right now, I just want Jeff to tell us a little bit about his history with art and just a few things about how it is that you came to be a business owner in Cumberland. Well, um, I grew up in Shell Lake and I met a girl from Cumberland, Chris Hopkins, and um, after college we I got a teaching job here which I held for about 10 years um, and we right away started making um, paintings and pottery and uh, we sold that first at craft fairs and things and uh, when we moved closer to town, um, we opened up a shop there, and we had a, pot or a potter's shed near our home and so forth. But in 2006 or seven, um, a group of businessmen were interested in revitalizing the main street of Cumberland. Um, if you can remember back then, it had a lot of closed businesses. This was the closed video sh shop, in fact. I do remember. And, um, and I was working for uh, one of those folks, and I said, well, maybe I should also move my business to town. And, you know, one thing led to another, and here we are. It's 14 years later, about, and we're still here, so I guess we'll call that a success. Do <laughs> um, you have anything? Did I say enough things? I don't remember what yes, I said. Yes, oh, absolutely, oh, yeah. So... Uh, what I think we'll do now is we'll try to get as many of your artist works in as possible. So we are going to start right over here. We have um, at present somewhere between 50 and 60 artists or artisans who have work here. Um, if you look right down here, let's see if I can see that. Um, Dick Erickson is a guy who was born and raised in Cumberland, now lives near El Paso, Texas, but he makes um, granite um, paraffin lamps. They're like granite candles. You can see in a photograph of what they look like. They're really quite popular. Um, the artist whose work you see up here is Don Reedy, a Serona uh, oil painter, and uh, he was a former um, instructor of mine at uh, UW Barron County back in the day. Wyatt Pratt is a Cumberland guy who makes walking sticks. Dick Mindekowski is a Native American Cumberland man who makes walking sticks and some other things that I'll show you in just a moment. Here's a uh, collection, fur of, a further collection of um, Don Reedy's paintings right there. And um, on this wall, uh, a new artist to us, uh, Spooner, a photographer that just moved to Spooner, Joe Hendershot. And uh, these are photographs to begin with, and then he coats them with wax and draws on them and carves in them. And caustic is what these are. Pretty interesting stuff. Dave Grossman from Balsam Lake uh, hand makes wood utensils. And uh, Joe Clark, who some of you will know from his Christmas tree farm, Snowshoe Valley, makes some delightful um, wooden utensils, too. Which we're almost out of, out of by the way, Joe. We need <laughs> if you're <more>. listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I make, I make some, too. Very simple ones. I don't do anything too fancy. Um, then, <clears throat> right here are some, uh, some more of uh, Dick Mindekowski's works. And uh, from Baronet, we have Bill Neff, who hand turns um, bowls in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. 
Joe Stuntz was born and raised in Cumberland, and he makes um, driftwood fish and signs. He now lives in uh, Holton, which is just outside Stillwater. So, you know, people from who grew up here come back to us, and uh, they just come through the door, and, you know, mostly we give them a shot, see if, you know, people are interested in the things they're making. Um, there are a number of jewelers also. Um, these are, let's see if I can get those. This will be, well, not so bad, I guess. This, these are um, uh, pendants by Beth Klein, who lives in Arizona now, but grew up um, at, coming to their uh, cabin near, right near the beach, actually. And Brenda Hat, when she first started, bringing her stuff to us, lived in Spooner, and now she lives, I believe, in Spring Valley, Wisconsin. Both of these artists are silversmiths. They, you know, get sheets of silver and pound it and texture it and turn it into things. Um, this is um, watercolor by Kurt Jacobs, a Cumberland retired veterinarian. Almost all of these are originals, by the way. He does do some prints. Uh, I guess mostly with my encouraging, but um, even the cards are original watercolor painting. Really cool. Oops. And now they're all over the floor. I got it. <laughs> um, Len Sharon is a northern Minnesota basket weaver. Um, and uh, these are his works. And uh, Frank Montana is a pretty local. Native American flautist and flute maker. And these are flutes by Frank Montana. Um, Paul Merrick is a luck um, artisan who does uh, cozies out of sumac. And also, <laughs> I'm like a bull in a china sack. <laughs> and also, if you look, if you can pan up, he did that sculpture of a church too. All right. Alan and Shell uh, Faulkner make uh, uh, canvas-mounted uh, photographs. She's the photographer, and then uh, Alan does the framing and the stretching of the canvases. They print their, these are all their photographs that they've taken in northern Wisconsin and uh, along the uh, shore of Lake Superior mostly. Then, if we go this way, um, we have uh, photographs by Linda Reedy, who is Don Reedy's wife, also from Sorona. <clears throat> then we turn the other way. We have um, Judith Keppers, who is continuing to keep uh, Keppers' pottery. Um, work available to us, and um, Scott Sandy, who lives in rural Cumberland, uh, is a pretty new artist to us in the last year or so, um, and then um, Candace Jacobs, who has moved to the UP, but lived in Cumberland for all the her years until she was kind of in her 20s, maybe, and um, then John Terry, who is a Menominee, Potter. We have quite an array, really, of pottery. Ready? Then Sue Fries, who some of you will remember as a charmer. Her maiden name was Charmer. Sue is a photographer and printer uh, who can print on anything. She's got uh, machines to print on just about anything. These are um, printed on aluminum sheets, and it gives that incredible contrast with the, the glossy prints on those and um, some she makes into clocks like this one here and uh, she also is doing uh, what I would call you know mask fashion we now have mask fashion also <laughs> hopefully this will be something that doesn't last forever though huh <laughs> um, she also prints on um, tile and on glass 
that's uh, those are cutting boards, and then there are some coasters. So you can see she she can print uh, rugs too, uh, like entry rugs, that sort of thing. Um, these are works by Judy Shade. She's a Chautauqua area watercolorist. She taught a, a class in town, um, oh maybe ten years ago or so, for quite a few years. So um, she should be familiar to many people from town as well. And then we're going to go buy some folk manis pu puppets, which are made by nobody local, but you know they're just too fun. Okay, then. Um, most of the artists we have have cards of one kind or another in here too. Uh, some that are, um, like Bill Tooze has some cards in here. He's a local guy. And uh, these are some cards um, by um, Marty? Marty's, yeah, Marty Peters. These are Marty Peters' uh, um, drone shots of Cumberland. Man, if you haven't seen those, there's some fabulous shots of Cumberland. There. Yes, he has some other works in here as well, which will be in our follow-up video. We just can't get to everything live. We just don't have enough time. Um, Janie Minninger does um, wool dryer balls. So, you know, it's not all paintings and stuff here. It's a whole bunch of different kinds of things. Um, and then um, Sandra Eby from Cumberland does uh, cards that are, you know, they're assembled out of... Uh, Cards. So I don't know how long she spends on each card, but they're really cool cards too. Um, and then if you focus here just for a moment, you get, can you reach this over here? You might be able to make it all the way over okay. here. Heather Dubois from Clayton makes candles. These are really quite popular in all kinds of flavors, I would say, many different scents. And she also does some jewelry, which we'll go by in just a moment. Uh, Don Stiver does um, goat's milk soaps and uh, lotions, and he also does um, kind of funky uh, birdhouses. Yes, he yeah. is a very fun guy. I quite enjoy talking with him. Some of you may know him from our Rutabaga Craft Fair, yeah. where he is always in front of the DNR building. That's exactly right. So, let's see. Um, Straight ahead of you are those steel plates. These are done by Zach Warner, who, you know, people in Cumberland will know as Larry Warner's son. And um, so those are a couple of pieces by him. Um, Greg Moe has some things in here, Alvin Gregory. These are uh, CDs for the, of his original songs. And then um, my wife, well, let's go back this way just for a moment. Because Heather Watt has really pretty inexpensive um, jewelry. And, uh, and she, she does interesting uh, stamping of uh, words and things on them. Like, for example, this one, the mountains are calling, I must go, for example. And they're, uh, they're very nice. Um, the Snowplow Polka, this is uh, David and Valerie Atkinson from Turtle Lake, have written a book. So we've got uh, these, and uh, Alexi Courier is another guy from Cumberland who has uh, some books here too, uh, uh, author, local authors, mostly picture books. This one isn't, uh, but uh, Alexi's are. Uh, and then uh, my wife Chris has all manner of semi-precious stone jewelry and uh, a lot of she also does pearls um, and she does uh, necklaces and pendants and earrings um, in all price ranges. So I think, you know, sometimes I think, well, people go, go by and think, well, this is a, that's an art gallery, it must be expensive, but really, we have some expensive things in here, but we have uh, things in all price ranges, really, you know, our, from our cars that are a dollar 95 to, you know, uh, many of these things are $20 to $40, something like that. That's a common uh, price for these things. Now we're back to um, the services portion of the business. This is where I do framing. Um, and uh, right now, I'm doing some kind of interesting 
framing of old fishing lures. So, you know, you think, well, it's not necessarily just pictures that get framed, but sometimes the most fun things to frame are other things that you might want displayed in a way. Uh, there's another, another one that's um, handmade clown dolls that uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to put in a kind of a domed uh, presentation. So, you know, if you have an interesting thing you'd like presented, that's the kind of thing we would do here. You also do some of your repair here. Okay. Uh, and, and you string guitars there constantly. Right. <laughs> if you pan this way, you'll see our uh, strings and so forth. Originally, I got I put the guitars in here because I, I think they're an interesting art object. You know, they're, they're a machine, they're a tool, and they're a beautiful thing to look at. Um, and the, the looks of them isn't all about function. I mean, they, the shape of them and the colors, uh, you know, just for the fun of it. Uh, the, and the uh, guitar that you see up above there is one that um, I carved the front of, carved and painted it. So it sort of looks like a leather uh, embossed. It looks embossed. It is embossed, in fact. But uh, we, if you buy strings here, we'll put them on for free. We've got tuners and uh, uh, capos and uh, strings, and uh, I work on guitars and mandolins and violins and cellos and everything. So um, there you have it. Right. Have we got enough cable to keep on going back here? All right, we are going to get to the coup de resistance, the music room. <laughs> We sell music books and things, and we make some of the uh, our guitar straps. So you won't see you won't see guitar guitar straps like this anywhere else. We make them ourselves uh, from fabric that I guess is not made, necessarily made for guitar strap fabric. There you go. And um, this is the room that some people really love to come into just to stand around by all the instruments and play. The acoustics in here, by the way, are great. <laughs> so you can come in and shut the door and play for a while. It's fun in, in this room. And you can see the array of things that we have. We have electric guitars and mandolins, and uh, we've got one cello at present. I don't carry too many cellos, um, but a bunch of violins um, and uh, a wide manner of um, banjos and um, acoustic guitars as well. So. Jeff, it seems like you just do a little bit of everything around here. Is there anything else that maybe is going to be coming up soon that you want to let people know about? Well, we've got a website that's launched, uh, but we're waiting for the, uh, let's see, the transfer, I guess you'd call it. We've been waiting for, you know, the better part of two weeks now. I thought it would surely be up by now. But anyway, you'll be able to see all of these things shop, in fact, on our website. And uh, I hope that uh, we can stop traffic on the street um, and uh, have them then go to our website and come in and come into all those other businesses that are nearby. So. If we have a goal for our business, I guess that's what I'd say it is. Do you want to say what the uh, website address was? Oh, the website is, is dancingbirdartstudio.com. Dancingbirdartstudio.com, which now, you know, the last time I checked, just says it's <laughs> under construction. But really, it's mostly done. You can go in there and find out what we have here, and you can kind of shop right online. So. Well, we'll be sure to put that link in with our follow-up video. So that about wraps things up for today. Uh, we are so happy that you guys were able to join us for this virtual visit. Anybody who um, you know hasn't been able to really leave the house, hopefully will enjoy being able to see a little bit of what's going on in Cumberland. Um, looks like we don't have any questions, but we... <laughs> um, we just want to let everybody know, too, that this is going to be something we'll be doing every Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, you can look to join us next week when we are at Alternativa Solutions and also in downtown. Uh, if you do think of anybody who might want to do one of these videos with the Chamber of Commerce, please let us know and we will try to get a peek into their shop as well. 
So again, thank you to everybody who joined us today and we hope you have a great day.